Hi Biotechnicals, this is Dr. Farhan Zameer from Biotechnica Bangalore. For today, we would make an et and other important content for your research, especially for people who are pursuing research in phytochemistry. And how do I know that my molecule has been whether uh, it has been already used for a particular bioactivity or not? Okay, so this is a big dilemma for most of the students and most of the researchers who are starting their research, especially with phytomolecules. And for solving this particular huge problem, we at Biotechnica, we are trying to dedicate certain content, especially for people who are doing plant biology. So let us try to understand this newer database, which is called as Dr. Duke's database for analysis of your phytomolecules. Let's dive in. So welcome back. So as I was trying to give you a preamble of how do I search for phytomolecules and their ethnobotanical importance and for this there is a beautiful database from uh, the US government and this database uh, is called as the UC SA uh, database. This is from the, the uh, US Department of Agricultural Sciences and this talks about Dr. Duke's phytochemical and ethnobotanical database. So please remember the database is called as onto the Google you need to just go and type as Dr. Duke's phytochemical and ethnobotanical database and this is a database which will facilitate an in-depth analysis on plants not just plant but the phytochemical which is present in it and very importantly already the bioactivity which has been already performed on these particular phytomolecules or on the plant parts. So Apart from that, it will also give you the, the pharmaceutical properties, nutritional properties and the biomedical research which has been done on this for its therapeutic purposes and the herbal products which have been already developed. So what I am talking about is a big ocean of information on phytomolecules and let's see what best we can explore. Now, if you are able to look into the screen and onto the screen, it says there are more than 49,788 entities. So this means to say there are more than 50,000 biomolecules which have been curated and they are regularly updating it. So hence, you know, whatever information you have is an updated information. So this could be reliable. Now, let me take you a, a, a brief example and then try to make you understand. And the intention is for you to experiment it uh, hands on. And with that, let me take an example of red claw. Okay, so I take the red claw. So, you know, I type in there and then I have options over here saying that, you know, do you want to look into the phytochemical component or do you want to look into the biological activity or if say for example you want to find out a vendor who is actually providing you um, this particular chemical and the chemical nature of uh, uh, the molecule you can also look into it and you can also see what are the plants which are actually having this kind of a molecule and then what are the other syndromes in which this molecule could be used as a ligand molecule and which could be target uh, onto a particular protein or a nucleic acid and apart from that I can also look into its ethnobotanical importance very importantly whether this particular plant is of ethnobotanical importance or not or I can if it is so I can also look into what are the uses of this particular you know uh, ligand molecule or the phytochemical which has already been performed. So this is a huge information. Uh, you will only believe me when you actually go and work on this particular database. It's completely free and at Biotechnica what we do is the public domain databases are actually taken up in, as an example because once even once we teach you our intention is we want you people to go and actually look into the database, experiment with the database, learn more on the database because this is an information which is already available on in the public database and we want you people to explore it in a better way so that you know what people have thought until now there are a lot of chances that you can deviate from there, think out of the box and you can come up with new new bioactivity that is our intention. Now let me take up an example of a bioactivity so I have typed a, a red clover and then I want to see what exactly is the bioactivity uh, which has been performed. 
Now, when I look into it, look at this, beautiful. Okay, so it already says that there are almost 10 bioactivities which are already been elucidated and it is not saying that a vague answer as you know, it is working on cholesterol metabolism. Look at this. So on the ninth activity, it says that this molecule, this phytochemical is responsible for the suppression of HMG-CoA reductase activity. So it is huge specific. Okay, so it is like, you know, completely specific and it says that uh, it is not just onto the cholesterol metabolism and if you know the biochemistry and the metabolic component of, you know, the cholesterol biosynthesis, then you will appreciate this uh, because HMG-CoA is one of the major rate limiting enzyme and this particular step is called as a rate limiting step which actually decides the entire cholesterol pathway. And what is this molecule doing? This molecule is being used as a suppressor onto the HMG-CoA reductase activity. Like that, you can have an activity on 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. You know, uh, they have also seen a huge activity on uh, prolactin-induced uh, prostatic growth. They have also seen activity on testosterone 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. So, uh, huge information is already been available. Now, depending on this, you can use this information as a primary data or else if you can skip this data and try to look upon certain newer targets, that would be much more better. So, you know, you the first intention is you get a biological activity right on your, you know, palm top. The next thing is, let me check what are the chemicals which are available here. So, on this particular, you know, phytomolecule, there are these many chemicals which are already there. And I can see, well, you know, there, there are a lot of sugars, there are a lot of uh, reducing sugars, then enzymes, you know, reductases and all this. So, which would also give me an information that this can also work on the carbohydrate metabolism and also on the lipid metabolism. Then, very importantly, from the chemical, let me go and look into what are the plants which are actually producing this particular phytomolecule and you have a huge series of plants which are positive for production of these particular phytomolecules. So you can see a huge list of plants which are actually producing a molecule which is called as red clover. Now, apart from the plant, let me try to shift gears onto the ethnobotanical uses of this particular plant. Now, on to the ethnobotanical uses of this particular plant. Let me try to look upon it. So, it's right now it says for the red cloud, you right now you don't have that, you know, uh, the stitch database which has been done. Let me type in another example, maybe curcumin. So, curcumin and its ethnobotanical uses, and then I say search over here. I need to place this as the bioactivity and then search for it okay so when i search for a bioactivity so this is giving me information on what are the various kinds of bioactivity which is already available and then what are the phytomolecules which are also available with this particular plant so you know uh, in the previous video also i we have already you know give you uh, have given a particular framework on a, this kind of a similar database but this is an international database which talks about uh, the data from the Dr. Duke's database. But however, uh, the previous database, uh, what we have discussed that was IMPACT, that was giving you an information on the Indian medicinal plants and their formulations. So the intention is, we want you people to actually have an amalgamation of the data which is available on plants, either on an Indian database or on an international database. So this will actually facilitate your curation, uh, especially for your research work on an easier mode so that you can be much more productive and your research could be facilitated towards novelty. This is our intention at Biotechnica. If you have any other, other doubts regarding how to use it uh, and if you're not familiar, one thing is go play around and beyond that if you are if you still need assistance you can always write to us at support at biotechnica.org until then do good research keep growing keep upgrading all the very best